I, okay. Welcome back to Big Talk from Small Libraries. I am Krista Porter, your host here at the Nebraska Library Commission. There I am. Hello. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, and we are about ready for our, our uh, 1 p.m. Central Time session. Uh, we just finished up our lightning rounds and some really quick five, uh, 10 minutes uh, presentations going. And we are now on to our afternoon sessions. Um, first up with us is Janet Reynolds. Good afternoon, Janet, from um, Kansas. And your library district serves, uh, population serve 2,400. One of definitely another one of our smaller ones. Um, and she's going to talk about fitness, food, and fun with our senior citizens. So I will just hand it over to you, Janet, to take away and tell us about what you did. All right. Fitness, food, and fun. Um, seniors are um, a lot of fun. Senior citizens, that is. And um, it was an area that we didn't do a lot with. And so we're uh, working now with that group. Let me see if I can get this to change slides. Yep, there you uh, go. I started at the library in 1979, and my main goal was children and I did children's programs. I went on to college, became an elementary teacher, um, worked in the school district in various roles, went back and got my high school media and served as high school librarian, did technology testing curriculum and finally got tired of all of that and retired in May of 2018 and started at the public library full time. And with a promise that I would start some adult programming. And we just didn't have a lot of adult programming. And so what, what are we doing to meet that need? Prior to 2018, we had a few things. We had a monthly card party, and some people always wonder what a card party was. Well, it was scrapbooking and making cards. Once in a while, we did uh, an adult coloring program, or we'd have somebody come in and do a painting class. Once a year, we'd do a mystery uh, and dinner. We had a Christmas homes tour, um, various uh, things like that that we worked, but nothing like a story hour for adults, nothing that was continuous. In 2018, we received word that the senior center was closing due to a lack of participation. It was really strange because our over 50 population was growing, but they're closing the senior center due to a lack of participation. And on top of that, they suspended delivery of Meals on Wheels, except to those who had a doctor's statement. So we had a whole bunch of people that were, you know, not being serviced any longer. And like I said, our population was aging. Our children's programs were dwindling. We used to have 20, 30 kids at a program. You know, we were getting seven, eight kids. And we'd have evening programs, but we weren't pulling in uh, the seniors. So our first program was a Thursday Lunch and Learn. And if anybody remembers, two years ago, I did a presentation here on our summer lunch program and talked about how we wanted it to be more than a feeding station. And that's the same thing we wanted for the seniors. We didn't just want them to come in and have a meal and go away. We wanted to do something. Our volunteer, Miss Rita, she's the lady who cooks for our kids' meals. She had worked in nursing homes and things like that, and she wanted to do something with the seniors. So we kind of collaborated. She said, well, we can do once a week and do a, um, I'll do a lunch for the seniors. So then it was, what kind of programs, bingo, what can we do? Um, when you guys get the presentation, there's a couple links here that will take you to our um, website and our Facebook page. Um, once the recording uh, is up, you can click and see some of the different things we do every week. The first, mm, how come I, let's see, I better go backwards here. I'm going the wrong way. Let's try this again here. Uh, 
we set up our meeting room in kind of a U-shaped and people would come in, get their plates, sit down, would give them about 30 minutes to eat and we would talk about um, uh, various uh, topics. And one of the first ones that we did was a um, presentation by a fellow librarian from Osage City. She had been doing something she called dot painting. And I said, I'll bring that down and let's do it with my seniors. She had done it several times with her seniors. So she brought all the materials, came in and um, told us what, uh, how to do it. And everybody's working really hard to do leaves with dots. And you had different kinds of points that you use to um, dot your leaves and make your designs. And that was a fun thing for them. That was one of our programs that was an art program. What does it take to do something like that? Well, someone or some ones that are a little crazy, you know, big dreamers. Um, and I had to put together a network of possible speakers, get some volunteers, because our program got bigger than we thought it was going to get. And Miss Rita couldn't handle it all by herself. So she uh, rounded up some volunteers to help her with the meals. And we got a little bit of grant money from some various places. We had the space and the time. And we had a vision. We weren't quite sure what that vision totally was. It kind of evolved as we went on. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do was cross-generational programming. And while we're in the town of Lacine, our school district covers um, three or four small communities. And our other school is in Parker. And I had worked with these teachers. So they wanted to partner with me when we started cross-generational programs. And so Parker Elementary uh, brought their first graders over and we did a gingerbread activity. Um, and the kids came and we've done it two years now and you'll see some different pictures as we go through. Um, the seniors working with them, helping them do different things. Um, another group that we've partnered with a little bit is some of our local homeschool kids. Um, we've had talent where they come and play the piano or they dance. Or in the middle picture there at the bottom, uh, the homeschool kids are serving the seniors desserts at the uh, Valentine's Day dinner we had. So taking advantage of the things that we have in our community or the, the people we know really uh, adds to it. Um, here's the second year. And if you notice between the two years, they're, the seniors aren't as engaged the first year. The second year, the seniors are much more engaged. They, they're they more used to the kids. They um, did more activities. And East Central Kansas Area Agency on Aging, I can't say that real fast, uh, worked with us and they brought in stuffed animals for the kids to stuff, like the Build-A-Bear things. So. The kids stuffed animals with the seniors and they did different gingerbread activities and we made them gingerbread men and things like that that they could uh, decorate. And then down in the corner you see all of the first graders from Parker with their stuffed animals that they created. And here's more pictures of them with the seniors and you can tell that the seniors are much more involved in the activity. Uh, the picture down at the um, oh, bottom it's right. A totally different situation, you can tell, yeah. You know, wow. it, the expressions on the face, the people, you know, they they just enjoy it. The, down on the right, uh, the little boy reading, we had a, a gingerbread story. And some of the kids at that point in the end of November, 1st of December, aren't reading well, but some of them are. And this little boy, he read to his adult mentor and she was so excited that she says, I want him every time. 
he reads so well and she just really <laughs> encouraged him and that's what some of those little ones need but on the other hand it's what some of our seniors needed they needed to enjoy their time with these kids um this was a hard group um we have a class at our local high school that one of my friends teaches and it's called a respite class um, because they wanted to call it something that uh, wasn't uh, you don't know how to read class and so they called it the respite respite class and in that class they're supposed to learn how to do lots of different things and the teacher and i uh, talk a lot and we came up with the idea of trying puppets. Well, I had a puppeteer coming um, through Kansas Humanities Council and she was going to do Grimm for Grown Ups. And um, she was going to bring some puppets. And so we got it so the high school kids could come, the freshman kids could come, uh, some of them, and eat lunch with us, watch the presentation, play some bingo, and then she was going to do a puppet workshop with them. They did not want to come. They did not want to work with the seniors and the seniors were about as nervous about having high school kids as the high school kids were about, you know, coming to the seniors. And you can kind of see in the first pictures, you know, things are, uh, you know, they're there. And then as time went on and we, did some different activities and bingo kind of loosened them up you know then they they were you know the seniors were cheering them on when they would win and things like that so by the time we get down to the um, bottom right hand corner there the kids are playing with the puppets um, you know things are much better and they told their teacher you know those old people weren't so bad after all. Um, and they want to come back. Glowing they, reviews. <laughs> they, they have asked if they can come back and uh, do lunch and bingo and activity with the seniors. Um, actually, we have them scheduled to come back in May. They have worked on a puppet show that they've written and developed. And they will bring it back and they will do a puppet show for the seniors and so i'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to go i think it will be a a good thing they presented to the parker first graders at christmas time and did a good job so you know just keeping that lines of communication open between the little kids the high school kids and the seniors a lot of the seniors hadn't had any, you know, any reason to interact with the children. And, you know, their grandkids are older, they've moved away. So, you know, it took a little learning on both sides, but it's been a very productive. And then you see, I don't know, I'm hitting something here. You see seniors just have to have a little fun. And I give them a hard time now that we've gotten comfortable enough that sometimes I tell them they act like my first graders. And as you can see here, it was right after New Year's, it was our first day uh, back that we served a lunch and Rita decorated the tables. They're playing bingo and wearing the little hats and blowing the um, little whistles and just having a good time and you can see the smiles on their face they're laughing um, just having having a good time they want want to do that and we'll talk a little more about that in a bit one new program that I instituted this year was armchair travelers a lot of my seniors haven't left the area or don't leave the area and then I have the other group who travel. And so I had asked 
the guy in the top left corner. He was my first principal that I worked with. I'd ask him and his wife if they would do a program on their trip to Australia. When I first started teaching, he had uh, come into my classroom and did a presentation on Australia for the kids. And then they went back in 2018. It took a year, but we finally got together and we started our first armchair traveler. And we had a big crowd watching about Australia. It was pictures they had taken and they talked about it. And then they brought a sample of a refreshment that they're served when they were in Australia. Um, my second armchair traveler program was by the lady in the purple shirt. She did the National Orphan Train Complex. So we went from Australia to just taking a road trip about four hours down the road to the National Orphan Train Complex here in Kansas. And she shared about that. Well, that was a, a trip that maybe some of my people will be able to do. Um, next, we had Italy and the lady in the black with the brown sweater. She talked about Italy and how she and her daughter had taken a trip over there. Then the last one that we've done so far um, was on Israel and the uh, lady in the black and white sweater. She was a former first grade teacher and she'd always wanted to go to Israel and she got to go last year. And so she shared about her trip and, you know, people were very interested in, you know, asking her questions about the Holy Lands and things like that. So Armchair Traveler is a fun one. It doesn't cost you anything. You can have somebody come in and share their trip. Um, all of them have had slides. Some of them use PowerPoint. Some of them use different things. I have, um, a lady who's on my library board coming this month and she's doing about her trip to Cuba. And next month I have another guy coming and talking about Italy again uh, from a different perspective. So this is a, an easy senior program and you'll find a lot of people really enjoyed that. This was something a local history project. This was something that I had um, worked with the same teacher on the puppet show and we were looking for something kind of like the old Foxfire books that they had back in the uh, 70s and 80s and we have a lot of local history and this is our second year to work on the project and this year went so much better. The area Area seniors worked with freshman English class in both of our communities. And there in the middle is the book they published, Their Past, Our Present, Our Future. Um, it's available on Amazon. The kids will be doing a book signing next week here at the library. And the seniors were excited to tell their stories. They were excited to share with, um, they want somebody to listen to their story. And the kids, you know, this year's group, they were more interested in the stories. They, they paid more attention. And the book, the quality of the book is just much better. And the kids, you know, have learned a lot. We've learned a lot. Um, they visited the local museum. We had a um, author come talk to them before they did it and the seniors they met with them at the museum then they met with them at the high school and they interviewed uh, the, the students got to interview them and they actually in their book they learned to do work cited and they they tell their story and then they tell who they got the information from. So the seniors are excited that their names are also going to be in the book. Another uh, local project that we uh, partnered up with is a project called Piper's Project. You know, I wanted the seniors to be involved in things and Piper's Project is first night bags for area foster kids. So a couple of times in the summer and a couple of times this fall, we had our groups um, 
worked together two Thai fleece blankets that would go into first night bags for foster kids. And it was a project started by a girl and her grandmother. And they um, give them to kids in Lynn, Miami and Johnson counties uh, right here on the eastern border of Kansas. So people buy and donate these um, quilt, fleece quilts and different groups and organizations tie them and then they go into the uh, bags. So to make it really more real for the seniors to understand what we were doing besides just tying quilts, they brought all the stuff in that went in the bags and the seniors, as you can see in that middle picture, are packing the bags. That they put in a fleece blanket, they put in some hygiene products, they put in books, they put in a stuffed animal, and then they, on the tag, say this is for like a uh, boy nine to 12 or a toddler or a baby, you know, and whatever age group that they decided on, then that's what they filled the bag with. And as you can see at the back table, uh, or the, uh, the first picture, they're all at the back table there and we have bags stacked all over. I think they did 60 or 70 bags that day and they filled them up and then the child services came to the library the next day and picked up all those bags and took them to um, their office in Pittsburgh and then they'll be available for children who a lot of times when they go to foster care, they don't get to take anything with them. So just extending the seniors' knowledge of needs in the community um, was a good thing. Where do you get the speakers, you know, for the programs? There's lots of places. Extension was my first go-to. Um, Extension had done a lot with me with my kids' programs, and so they, were my first go-tos. The lady in the black, they're holding the Christmas wreath. She's our library board president, but she's also a master food volunteer for extension. And so she has presented, um, and in this case, she's presenting um, a program that she did for their Knowledge at Noon where they can make handmade gifts. And so she showed all the different things and then we did a couple of projects that she had as crafts for them to take home on their handmade goods. Um, home health care, hospice, both of those have been very big about coming in and talking, volunteering, doing programs for us. Um, one of the hospice ladies who no longer works for hospice, but um, she came in and said, hey, you know, um, hospice is a bad word for seniors, but we want them to know that, you know, they're, just because you go on hospice doesn't mean you're going to die in the next week. So, you know, they came and they talked and talked about programs that they offer and making sure that the seniors knew what was available and also knew it wasn't, wasn't a bad word. Um, the girl down in the uh, bottom right-hand corner has done several programs for us. Her grandmother attends our uh, lunches. And so she comes in and has done a lot of programs on home health care. And next month she's coming in and she's talking, she's doing a home health care Jeopardy game with them. Um, we've had people from banks and financial planners come in. Um, a lot of seniors are confused about things like that. Um, listening to a financial planner has helped several of them because then they were able to talk with their children about the way their um, things were set up and what would happen if something happened to them. Probably the favorite of my um, seniors is the musicians. And you see there, uh, we had a musician from UMKC come down. We're about 50 miles south of Kansas City and he's a professor there and he came down and played Christmas music. Um, and he's from Brazil. And so a lot of the music he played had a Brazilian flavor. And in fact, he had to learn a couple of American 
uh, songs, Christmas songs for them to sing along with. We've had people from the health clinics and again, the armchair traveler. Prairie, Fun Prairie Sunflower Strings is a group about 30 minutes south of us. They play a lot of mandolin, uh, stringed instruments, uh, mountain dulcimer, all those kinds of things. And they've been very popular. We've had them a couple of times. Uh, music just seems to intrigue the seniors. Johnny Pierce is a, a guy out of Ottawa, and he has two main things that he does. He plays for children, preschool, um, or he does a lot of nursing homes. So he manages to get them involved. As you can see, the seniors are up dancing in the middle of the, of the room. Um, but he also brings drums and they're drumming and playing and things like that. So he's been a real uh, good program and he just, he'll sing the old songs, brings back memories. They'll talk about things like that. This is a, a thing that anybody can do with seniors is bingo. <coughs> um, we did invest in large print bingo because one of my ladies the, down in the middle in the pink, she can't see very well and she wanted to play and we uh, found some large print bingo cards and ones that slide down so you don't have to um, have pieces or something to cover up the things or use the dot markers and we bought a hundred of those and they've been very good now some of them kind of stick a little bit and if they get them wet then we've had to throw a few away but they love playing bingo we play bingo by janet's rules um and as somebody said earlier you can't charge them for anything um and but they'll play two three cards at a time and all they're going to do is win a little uh prize we'll look at some of those here in a minute um but they are they're excited to play bingo and we play so everybody wins you know once everybody's got a bingo then we play for blackout and so it's a lot of fun it involves them there's a lot of giggling a lot of laughter um a lot of iron orneriness i told them that I can tell when the weather's going to change because they're just like a classroom of third graders. They um, are ornery. Bingo prizes. Um, you can see um, one of them got a hat, one of them had a fly swatter. You know, we have a table set up over against the wall. Rita goes to Dollar General and she hits when they have things off at 70% off or 80% off. And our local Dollar General's been really good um, when they have things that they can't get rid of. They've made donations to us. Um, and a lot of our <coughs> seniors have made donations. Um, one lady had a collection of doll, ceramic dolls, and she's been bringing some of those because she's got to clean out her, her area and, and other people are taking them. So they, um, they enjoy their little bingo prizes. One of the things that I um, looked at and thought about when I was um, doing this is this quote, learn as if you were to live forever. And the purpose of learning is growth and our minds, unlike our bodies, can continue growing as we continue to live. Um, you know, we're never too old to learn and the pictures in this um, are Kathy Gal, who's an extension agent for us in our Meridazine district. She came and did a program about what do you do with important papers and how we should have some sort of a, a bag or something. If something happens, we can grab that bag and it's got copies of important papers and things like that in it. If we have to go, you know, through an emergency or if, you know, something happens to you, your, your children can find a, a thing that has your important papers. And we set up, 
we had a workshop on it. Then we had a day that was kind of a make it, take it. You're going to make your bag and take it with you. And a lot of the seniors who participated said they didn't realize that they should have all that stuff together somewhere where they could um, get a hold of it easily. So, you know, they're never too old to learn. And again, a couple other um, sayings that I thought were important. There's no, end to there's no end to education. It's not that you read a book and pass an examination and finish with education. The whole of life from the moment you're born to the moment you die is a process of learning. And so that's kind of the philosophy that I took with this program. You know, um, I wanted my seniors to be learning and growing. And if anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80, anyone who keeps learning stays young. And the greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. I had done a lot of reading about things like this and now actually doing it with the seniors, I have found that this really does make a difference. What else do seniors need? I mean, we were giving them food, fellowship, learning, activities, conversation. Well, we talked a little bit about health and wellness and exercise. Um, my home health group came in and talked about fall prevention. Um, Extension comes in and talks all about healthy eating. The chiropractor came in and talked about spring allergies. And another group came in and talked about exercise. And another group came in and talked about hearing and vision and how as we age that needs to be checked more. And, you know, thought I pretty well covered this. Um, but realized that, you know, we can talk a lot about it, but if we don't actually do it, they're probably not going to do it. And Dr. Noah Lindstra uh, from North Carolina had heard me talk on the, a um, couple years ago, and he sent me an email about a, prog a program called Jerry Fit, and um, he knew I had done a program with our um, kids during the summer, and we called it Fitness Thursday. Well, he sent this thing. He said, you might be interested in this. And so I decided to apply. I got involved in the pilot program. We were the only one that, in the state of Kansas, and we were the smallest library. And if you don't know about Jerry Fit, it is video driven, so you don't have to be the uh, teacher up front doing it. And so we decided to do it twice a week because that's what the pilot program required. And we said the focus was for over 65. We had so many people sign up that we ended up having to do two sessions a day, um, two times a week. And we had a winner that was not very nice last year and we ended up missing several days. And we made them up and I figured maybe they would be tired of it. They weren't. Um, we went through May and I thought, okay, we're done. No, they wanted to do it in the summer. Well, in the summer, our focus goes totally to kids. And so we ended up doing it once a week after hours and then came back in the fall and we do um, it twice a week, every week. So exercise had to be added to fitness, fun, fellowship, food. Um, and if you're not familiar with Jerry Fit, um, it is a health-based pro program and um, it's basically for adults and uh, you can do it in the chairs. And that's what a lot of my people liked was the fact that it, you know, it's a strength building, building program that they could do in their chair. And if you're interested, you know, Jerry Fit, you can find stuff on it. This was the 
uh, flyer that we sent out uh, telling them what we were going to do. They had to have a stretch band and they had to have a two pound weights. And you can see it's video driven. It's up on the large screen. They're sitting down for most of it, the early, um, the pre-stretch warm-ups, they're standing up and marching in place and different things like that. But I have varying degrees of people who could do it. Um, some uh, did everything seated, some were able to stand up and do everything. Um, but it was something that hasn't decreased. They They keep coming back, we're averaging 21 to 25 a week coming and some of them have come to almost everyone some of them came and then quit coming and then have started back again but it's been a very very good program and something that you know you can uh, put the dvd on and i do stay in there with them um We've not had but one problem and we had a lady who was sick and she kind of fainted on us, but we have, you know, not had any problems with, you know, them doing the exercises. I want to share a little bit with you um, about some of the things that the seniors have to say. This lady, Arlene, she's over 80, but I'm not sure how much over 80. And she was one of those that wasn't too sure she wanted to get involved and she ended up coming and doing some of the stuff and I asked them to write me notes about what was good about our programs and so she wrote this note but she wouldn't give it to me with everybody else she brought it to me separate and she said, these programs are very good. For those who have lost their spouse, they're all alone. And the program gives you a good healthy meal and leftovers to take home for the next day, which Miss Reed always makes enough leftovers that they can take something home. And you meet and make friends, play bingo, win, win small gifts that are things you wouldn't buy for yourself. They have programs to help us with meals and wills, etc. The senior exercise program, my doctor says is great and he wishes all of his patients would do it. And then having volunteer programs to help with the kids makes the senior feel like they are needed. She was one of the ones who just didn't know about this uh, summer lunch thing. <laughs> um, and she agreed to help one day a week. So last summer she would come in one day a week and she would help and then she started bragging about how good the kids were and how much she enjoyed the fun. And Rita told me that she's volunteered to come in three days a week this summer and help. So, you know, it gives her something to do. She's 80, I think 82, I'm not sure, um, years old. And she's got a new leash on life as far as, you know, she lost her husband. Um, now she's got something that makes her want to get up and get out of the house and do things. One of our fun programs that we did is down in the right hand corner, we had uh, a caricature artist come. I'd had it with the kids and I thought, oh, the seniors will enjoy this too. And she was the first one up there. She got her picture drawn. Um, she framed it. She's had a lot of fun with it. She's a convert. <laughs> uh huh. And you've got a doctor's recommendation now too for your program. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. And some of my other seniors, they um, they wrote things and I'll just highlight some of them. I've had a couple of ladies who just moved to the area and um, they um, have moved from larger towns and just having something to do um, and make friends and meet people have been a great um, thing for them. Um, they liked it because the programs are short. I usually um, make sure the programs don't last longer than 30 minutes because just like my first graders, they don't have a huge attention span. You go longer than 30 minutes, 
and they are, you know, chatting with each other or not paying attention. They like programs like the air fryer um, and learning how to use some of that stuff that maybe their kids have bought them for Christmas and they don't know how to use it. Um, so um, that's been a, a big thing. Um, this, uh, we had a lady who was doing the Jerry Fit and she just said she couldn't keep up with it with her knees, but she loves the other programs. And this one uh, right at the top, it says, we live in a typical small town, can uh, Kansas town, not much going on here. The library has become a vital part of the community, providing a welcoming place for seniors, many of whom live alone. We are so blessed to have an active library. You know, my, my seniors are probably our biggest, uh, pro you know, proponents for the library, um, which is a good thing. Um, so they, they support us, it really does help. Um, there's um, just a lot of different things that they um, have learned to do from our programs, but I think probably the biggest thing is the social aspect. They get out, they learn something, they can be active, and it doesn't cost a lot for any of these things. Most of these speakers are free. Most of our programs are free. You know, we may have to buy some art materials or things like that, but most all of it is free. Um, can you do this in your library? Well, the things that I heard from people that I've talked to is space issues and that that's a, a concern. Um, but you can do some of this in a fairly small area. Um, another thing that we talked about was the fact that, you know, maybe you partner up with your senior uh, center. Um, if your town still has a senior center and, you know, they're doing the meal and you bring a program in or you come in and play bingo with them. Um, or, you know, if it's not the senior center, you know, does one of the area churches have a senior group that you can go partner with or do something with? Um, the Christian church here has a, a senior night and a couple of times a year they ask me to bring either my young historians or a, another group up and do something for them. Um, scheduling. Found out real quick, noon to two is probably the best time for senior citizens. They they like to uh, get their lunch, uh, do their activities, and then head home. Um, financial, we just put out a donation can, and it doesn't pay for all of our expenses, but it helps. And if you plan it, will they come? I figured in 2018 when I planned this that we'd probably have five or 10 people show up based on what we had done with seniors in the past. And you need to keep it manageable. Our biggest group was around 60 and that's not super manageable. Um, and I've written a few grants and things like that to uh, get some funds to help. Um, here's partner with an assisted living or nursing home, check with area agencies on aging or Meals on Wheels. Um, you know, don't try to duplicate or outdo somebody else. If there's already an exercise time or things like that, um, you know, work with them instead of trying to do the same thing. Um, one of the visitors I had at one of my meals was from a, a little town up in northern Kansas, and he said that they have a community dinner and he says but we never have any programs and so he was going to go back and tell them that they needed to have programs and for us coming this year we're going to double the space in our library our programs have been so successful that um, we are going to double the size of our meeting room um, add on um, 
a bigger kitchen so we can uh, do more programming. And all of that with the gray roof area will be addition to our building. And wow, that's amazing. For, Congratulations. <laughs> for a small town in rural Kansas, this is, um, you know, pretty uh, big undertaking. And we are excited about being able to add to our building. But, you know, it was driven basically by the programming. We, we had outgrown our space. We couldn't provide senior programming simultaneously with children's programming. This way we can uh, program in this area in the new building or we can still program in the uh, one room that we had in the old building. So we're going to be able to do those kinds of things. Um, as you can see over here on the uh, far right, that's the program room that we have right now. The program room that we'll be moving into is on the north or the left hand side and it's about twice as big. So we will be able to host things in both rooms and we'll be able to um, have room for them to sit down and enjoy. We had an event Sunday here at the library and we had to turn people away because we didn't have enough seating. So, um, you know, if you plan it, they will come. You just kind of need to find the need and I'm maybe going to catch you up on time here just a little bit. Um, you know, start small. There's a lot of free speakers out there. Bingo is easy. It's something that the seniors like and those um, uh, little prizes, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, things like that. Um, as the one lady said, it's something that you wouldn't buy for yourself, but you might pick it up as a bingo prize. Um, volunteers, um, it's been amazing that um, some of the people have stepped up. We've got an 86 year old lady who's helping Rita with um, the, she serves a brunch now with the Jerry Fit program. She says that way the seniors can sit around and visit for a while longer and they have another good meal. Because so many of our seniors are widows and they, they don't cook. Um, so she watched and she said, we need this kind of stuff. And so we've been making it happen um, we don't require registration, which some days um, we are uh, looking and counting and figuring out how many, how many more people we have enough food for, but it always seems to work out and we have a lot of fun. So if anybody has questions mm -hmm. or they need ideas or help with planning, there's my contact information. Um, again, when you get the um, recording up, it'll have a link to our website and our um, Facebook page so you can see some of the things that we're doing. And if you're ever around Lacine, come by and visit us. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much, Janet. That was that was great. Um, really thrilled to hear about the seniors, you know, not the seniors that people are necessarily thinking about <laughs> you're uh, serving there. Um, but it's, it's what your community needs and that you, you know, pick up that, you know, filled that need that it was suddenly missing in the community. Um, so we do have a few questions that did came, come in actually. Uh, okay. Um, so we have some time here, we can ask some of them now. Um, someone wants to know how do you count your statistics? Um, all, um, count, you count how many children, how many families, adults, um, how do you keep track of, I know you're just talking about it, how wondering if you had enough food for people to come in, but how do you, how do you count that? Um, we, we have, uh, we're real technical here. We have a notebook and uh, we, we count the number of participants at Jerry Fit and we write that down. We count the number of participants at lunch and write it down. And one thing that I forgot to say on the lunch, um, we have some seniors who can't come to the library and people volunteer to take them a lunch from the library. So we treat that as a, a, a passive program. Sure. We, we provided the lunch um, and one of the seniors from the library takes it to their house and usually ends up sitting there telling them about what we've done um, that day at the library. So even outside the doors of the library, people are hearing about what we're doing because, you know, we'll send a, um, I mean, so far we've sent up to nine uh, different lunches out to people who uh, can't come to the library for the programs for whatever reason. 
Um, but basically, we do a, a head count, and I've got a new program on our uh, Biblionic system where I can uh, en enter every day how many people were here, mm -hmm. and so that uh, keep helps me keep track of the numbers. But a lot of it's still just paper and pencil. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, okay, a follow up from this person. Um, so I think she's asking about too um, the when you have the programming with both the senior citizens and the you know seniors or kids from the school. Um, which department is the question? Gets the credit for those? Do you separate youth from adult statistics, or do you or do you count them for and in both areas? Like how much children's programming is it, which is family programming or adult? Senior program. We we break ours up into birth to five, uh, six to eleven, uh, teens, twelve to eighteen, and adult eighteen and beyond. Mm -hmm. And whichever program that it's the main focus on. So mm -hmm. when I have a senior program and I have kids there, it all goes counted toward the um, adult program. Or if I have a and then vice versa, I'll do a kids program like we're doing Dr. Seuss on Monday. Mm -hmm. All of that, the senior helpers and people that are there will, it'll all count as a kids program. So whichever one my main focus is, that's mm -hmm. who gets the attendance count. Yeah, where it initiated from. Right. Sounds good. All right. Um, she says, thanks. That's exactly what she wanted to know. Uh, a couple of people did have a question about the Jerry Fit program that you do. Uh, sim same question. Do you have people sign a waiver for participating in that? Yes, there is a waiver that uh, Jerry Fitz sends and uh, they fill out and sign um, uh, when we did the the pilot program. And it also gave us a contact information if we needed to, if somebody, you know, got hurt or mm -hmm. something, who we would contact and, you know, they signed that. Now, I haven't been as good about doing that since we're not in the um, the trial period anymore. Um, but when we were the first 60 some people that signed up all signed that waiver. Mm -hmm. Okay, but those some of those are the same people coming back still though, right? Right, oh. right. And a lot of them are the same people. I mm -hmm. probably have half a dozen or maybe so people who have started since um, we did the trial period. Mm -hmm. um, and now another question just popped in here from, about Jerry Fit. What is the cost for that to, to the library? Uh, we had to buy the DVD. Well, actually, because I was in the trial period, I didn't have to buy the DVD. Oh. The, the cost to a library to start would be to um, uh, purchase the DVD. And uh, we purchased some stretch bands because out here, there wasn't any place to buy stretch bands, so we purchased some stretch bands from them too. And um, then we asked the people to bring their own stre stretch bands and weights, but some of them didn't have a stretch band. So we have a few that we keep on hands. So basically, once you've invested in that initial DVD um, or set of DVDs, whichever one you go with, um, you know, there's not really any expense and you can get a programming license with it so you can use it um, legally um, as we talked about earlier. So that's important. Okay. All right. So thank you so much, Jeanette. We just have uh, comments. Your energy and commitment are inspiring. Amazed by your summer lunches for kids. Um, the senior program is wonderful. Congratulations on your new building. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. You'll have to come back sometime and show us uh, how it turns out. <laughs> Oh, I probably will. <laughs> yeah, you're doing wonderful work there. Absolutely. All right. So thank you very much, Janet. Thank you. Yeah, we 